Hey, so, uh, you guys really like lists of stuff? You know, it feels like every day I'm getting asked to rank stuff, make lists of stuff. Well, you know, we, we got some time to spare right now, so let's list some stuff. Most common requests have been ranking GM Nightfalls, ranking Seasons, ranking Exotics. So, you know, let's start with GMs, something I've been getting quite familiar with over the past few months. This list is going to be hardest to easiest, what was the hardest GM, versus the easiest GMs to complete, and then we'll also talk about Conqueror on a per-season basis. I will try to incorporate specific seasons in terms of any notable GM experiences, like Season 11 Corrupted versus Season 15, as an example. I also polled my Twitch chat on how they felt about Strikes, and we felt pretty similarly for the most part, but I'll make notes of any time that my chat disagreed or had a different ranking. Real quick though, I just want to see how many times each strike has appeared in the GM rotation. There have been seven strikes that have only appeared once. Tree of Probabilities in Season 10, Savathun's Song, Strange Terrain, Festering Core, and Garden World in Season 11, Scarlet Keep in Season 12, and Hollowed Lair in Season 15. Scarlet Keep is the only strike that has a chance of returning, as all of the others are either in the DCV or will be entering it. And the Scarlet Keep is currently on the biggest drought in terms of appearances as well, last being seen in Season 12, obviously not counting anything that isn't in the game anymore. Uh, this gives a pretty high chance of Scarlet Keep being in Season 16, in my opinion. Many strikes have appeared two times. Arms Dealer, Proving Grounds, Fallen Saber, The Disgraced, The Corrupted, Glassway, Devil's Lair, Lake of Shadows, and Broodhold. Only a few have appeared three times. Word of Nothing, Insight Terminus, and Exodus Crash. And none of them have appeared four times just yet. Unfortunately, I didn't save a lot of earlier GM content in terms of recordings, so I am going to have to kind of go off memory and other people's videos if I don't have any footage of my own to go watch. Okay, so let's organize some stuff in recent memory first, and then we're going to go backwards. We're working with S tier, A, B, C, D, and easy tier. Uh, I didn't want to do a bunch of in-between tiers this time, just to hopefully keep things a little simpler. Hollowed Lair is going to go in the A tier. There are some places that can hold people up, especially with those mini screebs running around, potentially even underneath the ground since they were kind of bugged. The final boss room can become very overwhelming as well if you're not prepared. But after this place was dissected a bit and Bottom Tree Dawnblade came into the picture along with Agar Scepter, it got figured out moderately well. Definitely a step below the hardest stuff, but you know, I would still keep it probably in the A tier. Lake of Shadows is going in the easy tier. The strike is incredibly short with only a couple of spots that might get a little iffy. Knights spraying fire everywhere. The snipers in this place can one-shot you if you're not watching out for them, but after learning their locations, they are not really a big deal at all. With the final boss having no immune phase and having a ridiculously small health bar that is able to be bursted, there has yet to really be a time where this boss did not just immediately melt down. Now, if you don't insta-burst kill the boss, it can definitely get a little sketchy, but most people are just kind of insta-burning the boss. Exodus Crash is going into the C tier. Just because people don't like this strike does not make it particularly difficult, especially if you have a divinity to insta-stun all of the numerous captains within this strike. Most of the strike is pretty easy, but the boss can give people trouble if you don't have any sort of healing. With a Well of Radiance, this boss can go down pretty quickly. The boss room is essentially the make or break here. If you have a good boss room, then this place can be cleared in under 20 minutes. The community was torn here between a B and a C for this one, giving the boss maybe a little more credit than I did. The Corrupted Season 15 version is going into the A tier with Hollowed Lair, while Season 11 is going into the S tier. Most of the strike itself isn't too bad, with the elevator section and the final boss being the main hangups. Fortunately, the elevator room is at the very beginning, so a wipe here isn't too devastating. In Season 15, you have the capability of killing the boss before she teleports away, ending the fight before it ever really gets to start. If you don't manage to make that happen, then this boss can be a bit more difficult compared to most. In Season 11, this was one of the most difficult strikes to complete, and remains one of the most difficult to complete in GM Nightfall history. 
Devil's Lair is going into the easy tier. While Devil's Lair is one of the most fun strikes into the game due to its enemy density, there are so many safe places to stand that you're never really threatened that much. Most of the time, if you're dying in this place, you either got sniped or maybe you're just very out of position. Even the final boss room has a safe zone that 99% of enemies will not walk into, making it so this place can be taken as slow as you would like to take it. The community rating was a D tier strike, the reasons being it's not as easy as League of Shadows and because it's a longer experience. Proving Grounds Season 15 is going into the A tier, while Season 13 is going into the S tier. Not only does this have one of the most difficult midsections in the game, but the final boss is very demanding as well in terms of how it is handled. Although in Season 15, the midsection tank room was proving to be the much more difficult part of the strike. Season 15's boss room wasn't really that bad because of how easy it was to kill the champions, but Season 13's required much more precision and just much more damage because we didn't have particle deconstruction back then. With a limited cover and a small arena, this boss was one of the ultimate gatekeepers in the Grandmaster category in Season 13. The Glassway is going into the S tier strictly because of the boss encounter being one of the most difficult GM bosses to fight. Everything up to the boss is not actually too difficult, maybe save for the capture the plate part, but otherwise, the rest of the strike is relatively tame. The final boss, however, requires all players to constantly be on their toes and making callouts, baiting enemies in the right direction, and laying on tons of burst damage against champions that can kill you very, very quickly. A champion coming in from an unexpected direction or the mini Hydra boss coming in at a bad time means you could get overrun in a matter of seconds. Insight Terminus is going into the C tier. Most of Insight Terminus is not that difficult, with a couple of parts in the middle section requiring a bit of patience, but not much more. The toughest part of Insight Terminus is during the plate section while you are fighting the final boss, as non-stop spawning adds can really throw a wrench into your plans. When you do manage to get past that, the non-stop spawning adds are generally more of an annoyance as opposed to a threat, unless you have to start kiting around the room. Not to mention the boss's purple fire attack that will instantly kill anyone that touches it, even for a millisecond. But, as long as you are monitoring the boss's movements, this place shouldn't hold you up too much. The community actually put this in the D tier. I was a bit more generous with my rating because of the final boss and the potential for instant death. Fallen Saber is also going into the C tier. The main threat of death in this place is probably the first half of the boss's health bar where its solar sniper can one-shot you and where the electric fields in the boss room can shock and kill you very quickly. However, these electric fields are not too hard to avoid and the boss can be bursted down pretty quickly to a less threatening phase. The rest of the strike is not very demanding, especially with the divinity in your hands, but it's not a casual stroll either. The community was torn here between a B and C tier rating. Inverted Spire is going into the easy tier. The only remotely threatening part of this strike is having to wait for the launcher to get into position, but even that is made easy by quickly bursting down the unstoppable champion that spawns in at the start. The boss can also be bursted down very quickly, ending the fight before it gets to even the middle floor. This strike demands almost nothing of you as a player in terms of thumb skill, letting teams take this at their own pace. Warden of Nothing is going into the B tier. The Prison of Elders Arena is the first place you're really brought into a high stakes situation with a variety of champions spawning in after you trigger the encounter to start. You kind of needed to coordinate ahead of time and create a plan of attack if you wanted to get through this place without too much of a struggle. However, I think some spawns were changed to make it a bit more manageable. Maybe I'm thinking of something else I forget, but that might have happened. Executing on that plan is generally not the toughest thing in the world, but if you want a platinum run, you need to make sure no one dies in the process. Otherwise, it could all fall apart very quickly. The final boss is a little bit of a pushover as you're able to bring it down pretty quickly. While the room can be very lethal with the boss's fire attack and all the adds spawning in, you usually have a few tools and enough cover to keep yourself in the game without too much struggle. 
The community rating here was a C, but this was one of the most divisive in terms of its rating. I saw S tiers being thrown out there. I saw easy tiers being thrown out. This one was all over the place. The Disgraced is going into the D tier. This place is littered with ads, but most of them go down pretty easily. Most of the wipes in this place are gonna come from inexperience in terms of knowing when enemies are spawning in and where. As long as you don't overextend your positioning and learn some spawn patterns, most of this place should be a breeze, with the final boss encounter not really being that difficult. Unstoppable ogres not being stunned immediately after they spawn in the boss room will cause some problems, but if you kill them as they spawn in, well, they won't be. The arms dealer is going into the easy tier. Arms Dealer is one of the fastest GM experiences, assuming you go for a burst damage play on the final boss. The main hangup here will be in the tank room due to all of the ads that can be pretty spread out, the two barrier colossus sniping you from above, and the three unstoppable champions that spawn in after the second tank spawns in. You're able to kite these unstoppables all around this arena though, meaning you're never really in that much trouble unless you're getting too close. If you opt for a non-burst damage option on the final boss, then this room is actually pretty dangerous and I would definitely bump this up the list. But since you're able to burst the boss down, the fight generally can end before anything really scary happens. Broodhold, I am placing into the B tier, as the final boss can be pretty obnoxious to fight against thanks to the limited space, the adds spawning in, the champions, and the void version of the boss creating death traps along the ground constantly requiring your team to move. Everything going up to the boss is not really that big of a deal, and I would actually put it in the easy tier, but I remember the boss being pretty annoying. Annoying enough that I think it deserves a slightly high rating. The boss is a controlled chaos kind of scenario, requiring a lot of reacting to things going on as opposed to you and your team setting the pace. The community was not as generous as I was, placing this in between the C and D tiers. Scarlet Keep is going into the A tier thanks to an intense final boss experience. This time, it's a wave of unstoppable ogres that will completely demolish you on top of all of the other adds in the arena like tons of melee knights chasing you down and other acolytes shooting you from far away. In Season 15, you might think that this isn't a big deal, but in Season 12, we didn't have anything like Breach and Clear or Particle Deconstruction or even stuff like Bleak Watcher. We had an unstoppable shotgun and spoils of war, getting heavy ammo on champion finishers, which was pretty good. This final part of the boss room was intense and required a good amount of coordination to make sure that you weren't overwhelmed. If this were around in a later era, it would probably be brought down a peg. We're left with Savathun's Song, Tree of Probability, Strange Terrain, Festering Core, and Garden World from Season 10 and 11, which basically feel like a completely different era thanks to weapons like Mountaintop and Recluse being in the picture, on top of a lack of defensive strength in our mods, specifically chest armor. I'll be judging these in their respective eras, but I just don't have a ton of experience with them, especially in Season 11, which is the only season that I didn't get Conqueror, because I already had the title and I didn't care. Strange Terrain is going in the C tier. Uh, it should probably be B tier. B tier? It's tough. C or B, it's in between. Strange Terrain had a few rough spots during the strike itself regarding champions, but was actually one of the shorter GM experiences we've ever had in terms of the time it took to complete. The room before the boss room could also hold some people up due to all of the champions. Thanks to Wardcliff Coil and the way the final boss received damage, you were able to burst the boss down in one second to push to the next immunity phase and then kill the boss on that second damage phase. This led to very fast boss kills and the boss room itself wasn't exactly the most threatening one we've ever had. Without Wardcliff Coil, the boss could become a bigger problem, but Wardcliff wasn't a hard to get exotic. The community was the most divided on this strike to the point where I don't think they even came to any sort of consensus. It was just all over the place. Savathun's Song is going into the A tier. I think maybe if there was a B plus tier, I might put it there, but I think it's going to go into A. There were a lot of semi-dangerous scenarios in this strike, even right from the very start. The midsection had that double shrieker wave, and before that, a moderately tough outside section with multiple champions and other enemies that just 
plain hit really hard. The boss itself wasn't that easy either, the triple ogre wave being one of the main pain points. Even getting to the final part where you had to dunk the orb to break the shield was kind of dicey. Festering Core is going into the B tier. Festering Core isn't really split into many sections so much as it is one giant trek through a path with tons of champions and Cyclops ready to kill you in an instant. But you had a lot of space to spread out, so as long as you stayed back, you were pretty safe. The final boss room had tons of enemies, Cyclops, champions, and heavily shielded targets, but you also had a lot of cover and room to work with. My one gameplay that I have used double Well of Radiance when Phoenix was giving you free supers every time, so maybe with a different composition, this would have been a bit harder. The community struggled to place this strike, getting a lot of A and B tier votes. Tree of Probabilities is going into the A tier because of a difficult boss scenario. Most of the strike leading up to the boss should probably go into the D tier at best because the infinite forest was not very hard to tackle, and the part immediately after leaving the forest was maybe the slightest bit tougher, but not that bad. The boss room was a cluster, with a very small arena to fight in, combined with laser grids spawning in and out, instantly burning and killing you, on top of very lethal champions and cabal shotgunners. The next room after that had many champions capable of very high damage, on top of a laser grid, and on top of very limited cover, with the final room having a lot of the same, making this boss fight tough if you fell behind for even a second. However, community ratings were also all over the place here, unable to really come to any sort of consensus, likely due to how each person voting was capable or not capable of having an easy boss fight. Finally, I have no footage of a Garden World at all, besides when it was called Prestige. I know the final boss was a massive pain in the ass with teleporting cover and a laser beam that instantly killed you. The section before that was also kind of tough. The section before that section was also not very easy. I think I just have to put this in the S tier strictly for the boss fight, solely based on memory, and the community agreed with that assessment, even advocating for an S plus tier for this strike. Those are all of the individual strikes. Now we're gonna take a look at the toughest and easiest seasons to get Conqueror, starting with the easiest, which I believe is season 14. Now, normally how difficult it is to get Conqueror in a season should be based on the difficulty of the hardest thing that season, because without doing the hardest thing that season, you don't get Conqueror. But I think there might also be some subconscious ratings that I did, almost like I gave each strike a score, sort of. But community consensus was essentially the exact same as my ratings, so maybe I'm not too far off here. Season 14 not only had Breach and Clear, one of the strongest seasonal mods we've ever seen, and Anarchy, one of the strongest weapons in the franchise, we also had some of the easiest strikes in one season. Insight Terminus, Inverted Spire, and The Disgrace are all in the bottom tier in terms of difficulty, and Fallen Saber and Warden aren't that much higher. The only thing that would have held you up is the Glassway, but it was much easier than Season 12's version, and the only hard part is the boss. It's not like any other part of the strike is that difficult, but I do understand the boss fight itself is pretty difficult. Season 15 has to be next by virtue of particle deconstruction. Despite having what I believe would be among the hardest strikes in the game in Hollowed Lair, Corrupted, and Proving Grounds, Particle Deconstruction just kind of makes a mockery of the whole experience. Maybe not Hollowed Lair as much as the other two. Linear Fusions were able to kill the final boss of Corrupted in 5 seconds with nothing more than a well and some sort of stasis effect placed upon the boss. While Proving Ground's tank room was still pretty difficult, the final boss was no longer that much of a threat. Season 15 would definitely be among the hardest seasons had it not been for Particle Deconstruction. However, I would be willing to hear that Season 15 should be the easiest, depending on what you think is more difficult. Glassway Season 14, or Proving Grounds, or Corrupted Season 15. I totally think it's fair to say that Glassway is harder, which would make Season 15 the easiest. Following that, it probably has to be Season 13. 
Proving Grounds was the only major hang-up for most teams here, but it's definitely one you had to take very seriously at the time. Your only significant tools here were Anti-Barrier Sniper and Sundering Glare. You did also have Anti-Barrier Scout, so that combined with pre-nerf Dead Man's Tail did put in some work, but not really in the boss room. The rest of the strike roster is in the B tier or lower, with the second hardest strike being Warden of Nothing. Now, Season 10, 11, and 12 did not really have any super ridiculous mods. A couple of the strongest things we had were Oppressive Darkness, debuffing enemies hit with a Void Grenade, and Passive Guard, giving huge defensive bonuses using a sword when you're actually right next to a target. Seasons 10 and 11 also did not have the new version of the defense mods that go in chest armor, nor did they have stasis. So... The rest of the list is pretty much going off of the individual difficulty of the strikes. Season 10, the first season, I think gets the number three spot, mainly because none of the strikes here were particularly brutal. It was mainly the learning curve of the GM experience. Tree of Probabilities definitely held some people up in the boss room, but most of the strike otherwise was pretty easy. And Broodhold also wasn't too torturous until the final boss, although the final boss was definitely not a pushover whatsoever. This was the first time we saw Passive Guard in the game, which helped with certain strikes, and we were still in the era of Mountaintop and Recluse here, some of the strongest weapons the game's ever seen. Season 12 is going to get the number 2 spot as opposed to number 1, thanks to revised defensive mods and Spoils of War. Spoils of War is definitely in the top tier of seasonal mods, allowing for near-infinite heavy ammo. However, the strike roster was pretty tough. Glassway, Scarlet Keep, and Broodhold, with the other three just kind of being pushovers. I don't think it beats out our top spot, which goes to Season 11. Season 11 gets my most difficult season title, which kind of bums me out because Season 11 is the only season that I didn't care about doing GMs because you couldn't get the title multiple times just yet. So I kind of just checked out, but oh well. The Corrupted was a much more significant threat as a strike back in Season 11, way harder than anything from Season 10, combined with Garden World, which was just a nightmare to navigate after the Infinite Forest portion, with a final boss that felt like it instantly killed you and had no cover at all, which even though it did, it felt like it didn't. The only seasonal mod help you really had here was Oppressive Darkness and maybe, maybe Heavy Finisher, which required half of your super to use. Lake of Shadows is the only thing that really places low on the difficulty list in terms of the strike roster. So there you have it, my GM difficulty tier list up until this point. Feel free to give your own lists in the comments or just tell me how bad mine was. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.